Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. I'm getting calls now and I'm having to block my uncle, but I'll call him back. <laughs> I don't feel good about that. I had, he was trying to call me. How are y'all doing this evening? Happy Sunday, Sunday night check in with Elder Dobbins. How you all been? Did you have a happy Thanksgiving? I'm drinking a little tea as I often do when I come on. How are you doing, Kim? Amen, I understand needing it today. I'll start off just talking a little bit while everyone came on. I know most of you, good evening, Monique, only follow me on Instagram. Um, and last night I felt like I led to go live on Facebook and I probably should have done it all at the same time. But what I do know is that I was grateful that I was led and obedient by the Holy Spirit because there are a lot of people in need, a lot of people who are hurting. And so I am gracious and glad and honored that God would allow me to be a part of your process. Hey, D. Hey, Jasmine. Uh, and so I'm glad that the Lord has allowed me to be part of your process. Someone DM me today. And I thank you for the DMs. They remind me to be faithful. We all need a little accountability. So I tried to put a little story out there. That way it'll keep me accountable. <laughs> hey, D. She said, hey, mother. Uh, I am. If y'all have never heard me say this before, uh, for those of you who are new. Hey, Kersion. Good to see you again this Sunday. Um, I... I proudly label myself as the new school church mother. For those of you who didn't grow up in the church, you know, the older school church mothers, they were all a little older than I am. I definitely would not have qualified back in the day. Um, but I understand that positionally who I am in the kingdom. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Even though, you know, I want to still maintain a little of my youth. I am very, um, Thankful that God can still use me in this season to be connected to all ages. Uh, how are y'all doing? Come on in. Good evening, Elder Scruggs. Elder Scruggs is one of my friends. Um, and so we're going to give people just a little bit. Uh, just put in the comments, how are y'all doing tonight? I don't really, this is a Sunday night check-in. I'll start with my usual spiel in a few minutes. Um, so I'm really just trying to feel where you are, where, what's going on with you, so we can see where the Spirit of God is going to lead us tonight. I don't normally prepare a, um, I was gonna say a sermon. Uh, I, I sometimes prepare, so I don't want to say I don't normally, because I do sometimes prepare. I know a couple of weeks ago we were talking about soul care, and we talked about the mind, and we talked about the will, and we talked about the emotions. Uh, but then when I came on the next week, I was trying to have something prepared and the Holy Spirit took us in an entirely different way. Last week, um, we just felt uh, led to minister to the hearts of the people. Soul is hurt from rejection. I understand that uh, rejection can be a very painful um, experience. And so I definitely do not want to minimize your pain, minimize your hurt. I think there is something that all of us can relate to, whether it was being rejected by someone we love, rejected for a position or re rejected in other spheres of influence. Uh, we all have some connectivity to rejection. Um, but I do want to encourage you that once you get on the other side, what I have often found, and I'm not the first person to say this, I think I heard Bishop Noel Jones say this many, 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 many years ago, that rejection is oftentimes God's direction. Sometimes what we would choose is not what God would choose. And the only way for God to sometimes realign us or get us back on his path is to allow a door a window or a relationship, something to close, something to end. And though it feels like rejection and right now it's painful. So again, I'm not minimizing your pain. I am believing God that he will heal you, heal your heart, heal your wounds. And that on the other side, you will say um, the scripture that we all quote, for we know that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord, who are the called according to his purpose. 
So I'm gonna start off briefly with a couple, of, I don't know what's on my cup, okay. With a couple of things, oh, that's sugar. Um, with a couple of things. First of all, I would like for the ladies on here, those of you who are, um, who are interested, I am teaching for the last time, the art of hearing. I'm not gonna say for the last time ever, but it is the last time for 2020. We start that on tomorrow night. It is for Mondays, November 30th through December 21st. And we are having a Cyber Monday sale, which is already started. I've already made a post just a little while ago. So that class, which is normally $99, is $49. How are you doing, Sister Candy West? Um, that, um, that, that class is uh, discounted for Cyber Monday um, to $49. So if you have been waiting to get in that class, it starts again tomorrow. We're talking about the art of hearing, which is hearing uh, the voice of God. Oftentimes uh, I have people asking me, is this class for someone who's a baby Christian? Actually, this class is for everyone. This class is for anyone who wants to grow and mature in their faith and their ability to hear from God. Um, and so um, this class is for everyone. I love you, Sister Candy. I really do. I miss you. I just kind of hold back and make sure that I don't post that every day on your page. Candy, I miss you. Candy, I miss you. But I do love and I do miss you and I do honor the anointing that's on your life. Um, the art of hearing. The reason uh, that is very important is because oftentimes in the kingdom, we identify gifts that are the speaking gifts. And so we see people that speak and that they preach and that they teach and they pray, but you really cannot be an effective mouthpiece for God if you cannot effectively hear him. Jesus even says, I believe it's in John chapter 12, verse 46, somewhere around there, that he only speaks when the father says speaks. He then later on, when he is talking a few chapters later to the disciples about the Holy Spirit who was to come, he said, and he only speaks, meaning the Holy Spirit, when the father speaks. I think part of what's wrong in our society today, in the kingdom of God today, is that we have many people who are representatives of Christ, but they are not speaking only when God says speak. And so the art of hearing is about not just um, fine tuning your ability to hear God, but to cause you to sometime recognize instances where you have not heard him or where you heard him and were not obedient. In this walk, we are to go from faith to faith and to glory to glory. And now more than ever, it is it is incumbent on everyone under the sound of my voice that you have the ability to hear God for yourself. Listen, I believe in leadership. I believe in order. I believe in submission. I believe in that the pastor is over the church. I understand that and Christ is the head. But listen to me, if you cannot hear God for yourself, you will be misled sometimes by people who are not rightly dividing the word of truth. I, I see a movement now of so many people saying, thus said the Lord, and there are not any tangible fruits or tangible a witness that what they are saying is really coming from the throne of God. And what we really want you to do is to, to develop an inner ear or hearing and a knowing who God is so that you are not um, drawn away by your own lust. That's one thing what the scripture says, but that you do not fall prey or victim to the schemes or what the Bible calls the wiles of the devil. Uh, this is a day in time and now I feel my help in the room already. I'm trying to just explain the class to you. But this is a day and time where people use the term, uh, I mentor quite a few young women. And so I, I hear people say, um, words of affirmation are my love language. I feel led to share this with somebody tonight. And they'll say words of affirmation. So that means they want people to speak well of them. But what I begin to tell them, if, if the enemy knows that you're looking for a word, then the enemy will also send you a word. The enemy has studied you from childhood the enemy knows your vulnerabilities. The, the enemy knows where you had a void. The enemy knows where you were wounded. The enemy knows uh, how you feel about your life thus far. 
And what he will do is study you long enough because see, he's not the creator of anything. He is only an imitator. He will study you long enough. And if you watch over your life, he sends the same test every time. Whatever he sends your way, it is very similar to the last time. And that is because he is not an originator of anything. See, God is the creator of the universe. He is the creator. He is the creative being. Oh, I feel my help in the room. I think Sister Candy West pushed me on, pushed me on into this space. He is the creator of the universe, which means he is the creator of creators. In this time, and I'm coming back to love language in just a moment, but in this time where everybody wants to identify themselves as a creative, if you are are not careful, you will take the gifts and the talents that God has given you and you will surrender them to the to the workings and to the wiles of the enemy. The enemy will make you believe that God uh, is not able to pay you for what you do, that God is not able to give you uh, whatever this notoriety that you believe you need. He makes you believe that the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is subservient to the kingdom of men. He will make you believe that the sacred is less than the secular. He will make you believe that the devil pays more than God. He will make you believe that those who are serving the enemy and see many people are serving the devil and they don't even know they're serving him. That's a whole nother talk. That's a whole nother check in because some of them are saying that they love the Lord with their mouth, but they're serving the enemy with their heart. They're serving the enemy with their time. They're serving the enemy with their talents. The gifts that God has given them, they have laid them down at the foot of the enemy and allowed the enemy to build off their gifting. See, God is the creator and whatever creative ability that he has entrusted into your hands, he is looking for you to give it back to him. See, uh, we all say that when we go to church that we are singing a, a, a worship song to God. We lift our hands and we sing a song and we're saying that we're worshiping God. But I submit to you tonight, real worship is giving back to God what God gave to you. Oh, there's a pattern in the Bible. We go all the way back to the, to the book of Genesis. We go back to Abraham who had prayed and had sought God for a child and sought God for a seed. And God gave him his son Isaac. And the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis, I believe it's chapter 22, that he begins to talk to Abraham and say, now Abraham, give me back that which I gave you. Submit that child, that child you've been waiting on, that child that you've been believing for, that child that you tried to manufacture in your own strength and you tried to create an alternative path to what I had, uh, had promised you. And you went out and created a child in your own strength, in your own flesh. You went and slept with your handmaiden. You tore up your house. You wounded your, your wife. You wounded the woman and you wounded the child because at the end of the day, the child had to leave your house. That's a whole nother sermon of when we do things in our own strength, that you wound people that would have never had to be wounded. They didn't have to see. They pulled Hagar out. They said, let Hagar come sleep with Abram. And when Abram had a child with Hagar, now they have a bond. Now they have a seed. But at the end of the day, that was not who God had ordained, ordained to bring forth the promised seed. So at the end of the day, once Abram and his wife Sarai, their names had not just had been changed. Once they had given, um, once, yes, it had been changed. See, now I'm talking so fast. I'm going back and forth in my head. But once Abraham and Sarah had given birth to Isaac, and the, and the Bible says that one day Sarah looked out the window and she saw Hagar mocking her child. Now, see, if you're a mother on here, you will understand, yes, that makes you want to get up and fight. That's an anointing that is on the life of the mother. If you mess with our children, we want to get up and fight. But see, this wasn't just a mother looking at her child. This was a mother looking at the promised seed. Hagar actually wasn't just mocking the fact that Abraham and Sarah finally had a child. She was now mocking the promise. And because she now was mocking the promise, she 
don't want to mock the promise. Sometimes you may you you can't tell who God has called, who God has ordained. You don't know what God has prophesied and spoken over someone's life that has just not come into fruition yet, and you have put your mouth on it and you start mocking the promise. You don't want to mock the promise. Uh, we go over to Elijah. Elijah is my witness. What happens when the children run out and they're yelling at him and they're calling him names and he speaks a cur and a curse comes down on them and, and, and a bear comes out and then they become bald. So everybody to call me doing this live tonight, but you do not want to mock the promise. But I said that all to say back to the creative. I'm not lost. Whenever God asks you for something or whenever he gives you something, he gives it to you with the understanding that you're going to give it back to him. See, he gives his son and it's with the understanding that you're going to give your life to him. When he, his son came, he sacrificed his only son on the cross and his son died for you. And it is with the understanding that you will now accept salvation and you will give your life back to him. So whatever gift God has given you, whatever creative abilities God has given you, whatever talents God has given you, I want you to understand that God intends for you to give them back to him. How do you give them back to him? That whatever you do, you do it in the name of the Lord. See, it's not enough to say, oh, I, I honor God with my gift. But if I'm not serving him with my gift, that's really what I mean. If I'm not serving him with my gift, I can't use my gift for evil. And just because I turn around and say, but given under to God, who is the head of my life, uh, that automatically qualifies it as giving it back to him. No, I give it back to him when that gift serves the kingdom of God. I'm not lost. We're going to go back to love language because we're talking about the wiles of the enemy, the tricks of the enemy. We're talking about still the art of hearing God. And what the Holy Spirit reminded me is uh, when, when people start talking to me about love languages and words of affirmation, and I begin to just observe uh, from the outside how the enemy will then understand what you need and therefore he will send you what you need. But every time the enemy sends you what you need, it is temporary. It is never last. So it may look good for a moment, but because it's not love, it's not God, it's good, it's not God, it's not everlasting. Yes, it's the new age trap. Uh, a little bit of Bible and a little bit of this and you mix it all together. It sounds good. It doesn't sound evil. It doesn't sound bad. So I'm coming back to this. Hearing God and, and the reason you need to hear God is so that you will understand what is God and what is not God when words are spoken to you. See, we have a generation, and I'm not talking about an age group, I'm talking about the time in which we live, that we are addicted to prophecy. And we go around every week and every day, and we're online, and we're following this prophet, and we're following this prophet, and we need a word. But listen to me, you do not need another word from God if you have not obeyed the last word. God does not need to send you 10 words if you have not obeyed the first word. First of all, you do not need prophecy in order to live a successful and disciplined life as a Christian. The Bible says um, that we will live according to the word of God. When Jesus was talking to the devil, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded. The Bible is a proceeding word. You don't need a prophetic word. The Bible is a proceeded word. It, the Bible is spirit and life. It exists outside of time because the Bible was there in the beginning because John 1 and 1 says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So the very word of God, the very logos of God is proceeding. It is a proceeding word. It is a word that will hit you in 1955 and a word that will hit somebody else in 1987. And it is a word that will hit somebody else in 1989. And then it's a word that will hit somebody over in 2000. It is a proceeding word. It is a word. It is a word that will last. Heaven and earth shall pass away before one jot or one tittle of his word shall fail. So this is the word that you need to live your daily life. Because we are 
sufficient in the word of God, we now try to substitute it through a prophetic word. But the Bible lets us know that prophecies may fail. In the Bible, in the Bible that we are talking about right now, there is only one prophet, that prophet whose name is Samuel, who the Bible lets us know that not one of his words fell to the ground. Not one word. But the Bible doesn't say that one, none of his words fell. What it says is that the that God did not let any of his words fall to the ground. Not one. God did not allow one of Samuel's words to fall to the ground. So am I against prophecy? No, I'm not against prophecy. What am I? I am against emphatically is you trying to live your life according to a prophetic word. What I am against emphatically is you going to a prophet before you hitting your knees and your face and going before the King of Kings and the Lords of Lords. What I am against emphatically is you having more prophetic words in your spirit than you have the Logos word. Listen to me. The word of God has everything you need, everything you're looking for, the peace you're looking for, the wholeness that you're looking for, the financial breakthrough that you're looking for, the, re the reconciliation in your family that you're looking for, the restoration of your soul you're looking for. Everything you need is in the word of God. Everything you need is in the word. I'm going to say that scripture to you again, John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. There is no separation from the word and God. If you want to know what God thinks about something, you don't have to seek out a prophet. All you have to do is open up the word. All you have to do, if you don't know where to find it, use Dr. Google and type in scriptures on healing, scriptures on peace, scriptures on love. Somebody on here needs to type in scriptures on love so that you will understand that you have been accepted in the beloved that you will understand that he has already loved you with an everlasting love, that you will understand that it is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Somebody on here, my sis, that was dealing with rejection, I want you to know that the Bible lets us know that we have all been accepted in the beloved. So even though man can uh, reject you, even though a, a job may reject you, you have been accepted. You've been accepted by the one who is love. Not God loves. No, God is love. Love cannot exist in this world if God didn't exist. Listen to me. God himself is the embodiment of love. He is so much love that you could change the scripture to say, for love so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God is love. Everything you need is in the word of God, the art of hearing. I'm still talking about my class, I think. Why you need to be able to hear from God? Because I have seen many that are being manipulated and tricked. Uh, okay, let, let, let's just break it down. I see people building, <laughs> building their ministry, building their wealth, building what they call ministry. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Building what they call ministry, but yet it is really just a presentation, an oral presentation that keeps you hooked to them. It is an oral presentation that causes you to want more of them than to want more of God. They are not doing what Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. They are wanting you to follow them and to be dependent upon the word that proceeds out of their mouth. But I need you. I'm trying to raise up. I'm trying to disciple the best way I can because the Bible says make disciples of nations. So wherever this goes on over the airways. I'm trying to take you back to the basics to understand that I want to help uh, raise up a generation that will go back to seeking God, that will put God first and make him a priority. Go back to praying to God that they will pray. Let me, let's break this down. Let's make this clear. We pray to God. He is the only person that we pray to. We don't pray to Jesus. We don't pray to the Holy Spirit. We don't pray to the universe. We pray to God. When Jesus gave his disciples an example, he started off by saying, our father. So we pray 
to God. Jesus is our example. Jesus didn't pray to himself. Like I said before, I believe it's John chapter 12, verse 46, where Jesus says that I don't even speak unless the Father says speak. And the Holy Spirit who is to come, I believe that is in John chapter 16, that he begins to say he will speak only that which the Father says speak. So we pray to the Father. When I pray, I pray to God. God is the creator of the universe. God is omnipotent. God is omniscient. God is everywhere all at the same time. He is omnipotent. I pray to God because it is God who knows my end from the beginning. I pray to God because he predestined me. The Bible says that he whom he, whom he foreknew that he predestined. So it is God that I pray to, our Father. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father. I pray to God. That's why the Bible starts off letting you know who's in charge. In the beginning, God. Not at the beginning, because God existed before this beginning. No, it is in the beginning God created. God created. So I pray to God. Oh, but I come in the name that gives me access to God. Without Jesus, I am completely separated from God. That's why it doesn't matter. And, and it is good. We should live a moral and clean life. But morality alone won't get you to God. Uh, giving to the poor alone won't get you to God. Doing good to your neighbors alone won't get you to God. If you have not accepted Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, if you have not accepted him as your savior, if you do not believe that he was born of a virgin Mary, that he lived on this earth for 33 years, that he died on a Friday night, that he hung on the cross for you and for me, that our sickness was on the cross, our diseases were on the cross, our griefs were on the cross, our, cross, our, our, our sickness, our grief, our sorrow. All of it was on the cross. He died. He died until the sun refused to shine. He died until the earth began to quake. He died until God had to turn his face from him. Because his son, who, had, who knew no sin, became sin. The sin, the sin, the sins of this world, the sins of me, the sins of you, the sins of my fathers, the sins of my child, grandchildren to come. All of our sins were placed upon Jesus. But on Sunday morning, he got up on the third day. He defeated hell. He defeated death. He got up with all power in heaven and earth that had been given unto him. So I pray to God, but I come in the name of Jesus because it is Jesus who reconciled man to God. It is Jesus who became the propitiation of our sin, which means he appeased God's anger toward us. He prevented God from killing us like he done in days of old. It is Jesus. I pray to God. I come in the name of Jesus because the name of Jesus gives me access. The name of Jesus gives me victory. I don't pray for victory. I pray from victory because right now, even though I'm sitting in my living room and I'm talking to you, I'm also seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So I pray to God, but I pray in the name of Jesus. And if I really want to pray a perfect prayer, I can pray a per perfect prayer two ways. I can pray one way uh, with the understanding, I can pray the word of God. The word of God is perfect because the, the word of God is already inerrant. There is no error. The word of God is already uh, complete and whole. And so I pray first the word of God. So if I want to be healed, I need a scripture on healing and I pray the word of God. Listen to me. You want to pray the word of God and you want to speak the word of God because this world was created uh, by words and you are created in the image and likeness of God. So you need to put the logos word of God, which is the Bible in your mouth and in your spirit so that you will speak the word of God. You will declare the word which is already forever settled in heaven. You begin to declare the healing that is already settled in the word of God over your life. But the second way I pray a perfect prayer is by praying in the Holy Ghost. And I understand we all come from different backgrounds and every wasn't, everyone wasn't raised or trained or even understood the fullness of the Holy Ghost. But I want to let you know that it was in the book of Acts chapter 2 when the Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come that they were all in one place and they were with, they were with one accord and suddenly there was a sound from heaven as of, it was not, but as of 
a rushing mighty wind and cloven tongues came in and sat up on each of them and they all spake in other tongues. That's how I pray my perfect prayer. I pray with an understanding. I pray the word of God. And then I switch to the spirit and I begin to speak in my heavenly prayer language by praying under the utterance of the Holy Spirit. That is when I have gotten out of my mind and I am moving into the spirit and I'm letting uh, the scripture be fulfilled in me when he says out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. I submit myself to God. See, that's why many have not yet spoken in tongues because you're still stuck thinking in your mind. But listen, faith does not require your mind. Faith does not, I'm going to say it again, you didn't catch it. Faith does not require your mind. Faith requires your heart. You don't have to understand it in your mind. You just need to believe it in your heart. You just need to believe just the same way you accepted salvation. The same way that you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. That's all you need to do to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit is believe in your heart. The book of Psalms says, I open your mouth wide and he will fill it and let out of your belly flow rivers of living waters. Faith doesn't require your mind. That's the problem. We have a generation of overthinkers. And when the Holy Spirit drops something in your womb, in your spiritual womb, now your mind begins to talk you out of it. We don't need your mind. We don't need your intellect because the intellect cannot pass through to the spirit. The intellect is part of our flesh. It is part of our carnal nature. The spirit man, listen, you don't need your intellect because the Bible says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Am I saying I don't want you to be intelligent? No. What I'm telling you is you cannot confine God to your finite mind. You cannot through intellectual abilities that have been given to you from God now then determine the things of the spirit. If God would have allowed our intellect to be the barometer by which we would grow in our faith, then that would not have made him just. It would have made him unfair because everyone doesn't have the same intellectual capacity. But see, that's why faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. All God needs someone who is someone uh, is according to the book of James who will receive with meekness the engrafted word who is able to say your soul. I think we're still talking about why we need to hear from God. We need to hear from God because false prophets are arising. <laughs> and I understand we, we think we know some false prophets right now. We, we're calling out some false prophets. But what we've called out are some prophets who got it wrong. I don't know yet if they're false prophets because I'm careful because David taught me to touch not his anointed and do his prophet no harm. So David taught me that even though Saul was trying to kill him and the anointing had now left Saul and had now been given to David, but because Saul was once anointed and Saul was once appointed, when David had the opportunity to kill him, he didn't kill him. So I'm telling you now, yeah, there are some prophets who have gotten it wrong in this season. But I'm going to tell you right now, it is not just them who getting it wrong. It's some people who you listen to. It's some people who have decided to give you what your ears would want to hear. It's some people who have decided they're not going to dig down deep and they're not going to help uh, disciple you and cause you to grow. See, some people, I'm going back to what I said earlier, I'm not lost. They have built their platform a contingent upon your vulnerabilities, contingent upon the fact that you're not going to grow contingent upon the fact that you're going to go around and around in the same circle but circle over and over and over again but God is wanting you in this season to do what he's asked you to do open up your book the book the bible begin to read the word of God listen don't tell me that you don't understand it just read it until he starts speaking read it until he reveals it because some of it cannot be understood in your natural mind it has to be revealed to you I believe it's first Samuel 3 and 1 and when the Lord is calling Samuel and he's called his name three times and each time that Samuel goes 
goes back to Eli the priest. He is confusing God's voice with Eli's voice because that is the voice that is most familiar. That is the voice that has talked to him the most. So he is confusing God's voice with the voice that has spoken into his life the most. But now Eli begins to tell him, no, 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 the third time, the Bible says he perceived that it was the Lord calling him. Yes, Demetra, they've got to study. He perceived that it was God calling him. And he told him, go back and say, Lord, your servant heareth. But I brought up that passage to say that the scripture says that the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to Samuel. That's why he didn't recognize the voice. It had not yet been revealed to him. The word cannot be revealed if you don't read the word, if you don't study the word, if you don't desire the word, if you don't understand that you need the word of God more than your necessary food, that you need the word more than you need to eat three physical meals a day, that you're going to need the word. You're going to need to do what David said, that he hid his word in his heart so that he won't sin against him. You're going to need to hide the word in your heart because what's going to happen if the internet crashes? What's going to happen if you can't pull up the Bible app on your phone? What's going to happen if you get in a crisis? What's going to happen in America if we have persecution for real? What's going to happen? What's going to ground you? What's going to keep you? What's going to give you hope? What's see, see, that's what the word does. It gives you hope even when, they're look, when you look out and you see no hope. It gives you hope even when you're burying a loved one and you're crying and tears are streaming down your face. It gives you hope when that marriage comes to an end and God is still saying to you, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It gives you hope. It helps you stand. Listen, you need hope because because without hope, you have no faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. The enemy has gone around and he's trying to kill our hope. He's tried to kill our hope this year with COVID. He's tried to kill our hope with racism and systematic racism, oppression by the police. He's tried to kill our hope through the election. He's running around trying to kill our hope. But when I open up the book of life, oh my God, when I open up the word of God, I'm sounding like my mama now. Oh my God, when I open up and I read the word of God, it gives me hope. Uh, listen to me. You're not dependent on someone to feed you every day in the natural. I feel it. Someone on here may be disabled. If you are, I'm not talking to you. I had a disabled parent growing up, so I understand. Sometimes when you're disabled, you need you are dependent. But most of us are not dependent on people to feed us every day. We wake up and we eat breakfast. We wake up and we eat lunch. We wake up or we get on up in the day and we eat dinner. Why are you waiting to be fed your spiritual food just on Sunday? Why are you waiting for the meal that somebody else prepared for you? Yes, you should listen to your pastor. Yes, listen to the evangelist. Yes, listen to the prophet. But we should not be your only source. You should open up the book of life. And even if you do not understand it in your mind, your spirit man will get fed. Your spirit man receives nourishment. Your spirit man gets a little stronger. Your spirit man gets full. You can't just be dependent on those in leadership to feed you. Because when life happens or things go wrong, then you're going to blame someone else. You're going to have to open up the book. I started off talking about my class, The Art of Hearing, that is for women, and we have a sale. It starts tomorrow night, 49. Let me tell you, this is not just a class. I'm not on here just selling the class. The Art of Hearing is the only product I have ever charged for. I have another women's ministry, for those of you who don't know, Closing the Gap, I have never charged for. When I go speak, I don't even always charge. I listen to the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I send an honorarium. Sometimes I say whatever you bless me with. Sometimes I do it however God says do it. 
But the art of hearing is worth your investment because it's not just the teaching that you get. It's the ministry that you get afterward. I spend time teaching. We do Q&A. And for those who like to go to bed, need and go to bed on time, you can go to bed on time. You can log off Zoom. But for those that want to go deeper in ministry, for those that need prayer, we are standing beside you and with you. We are the reminders on earth that God will never leave you nor forsake you. We are choosing to be a con do it of his love and compassion. We are choosing that when he wants to speak, that we allow him to speak. We are choosing to cover his people. Hallelujah. Wherever you are. Hallelujah. It's important now more than ever, more than ever that you can hear from God. It is important now more than ever, though, listen to me, you, you can only hear him clearly according to um, the, the foundation of the word that you have. Someone says, how do we sign up? Um, the, the link is in my bio. I have a special, a Cyber Mon Monday special. The promo code is Cyber Monday, but the link is in my bio. But the, the post I made earlier also will show you exactly how to put the code in uh, to, to register for the art of hearing. But listen to me. We are living in a generation that is infatuated with the gifts of the spirit. I'm going to teach on this later next year. I don't know when and how because it's been coming up too much. Thank you, Jasmine. She put the code in, uh, in the comments. But we are infatuated or in love with the gifts of the spirit. But I want you to understand that the gifts are simply that. They're gifts. They're not of you. They're not of me. So when people say I'm gifted, I am, but it's not my gift. I just chose to give the gift back to God that he gave me so he can use it for the kingdom. So the gifts come, they're for free. The Bible says gifts and callings are without repentance, which really means God doesn't change his mind. They're, the gifts and callings, God chose that. God chose it. But listen to me. So you don't work for the gifts. You can perfect them. You can study to show yourself approved and you can perfect it. You can do it. You can, the more you do anything, the better you get at it. You can perfect your speaking. You can perfect even the prophecy. You can start operating in the, in the gift of prophecy, uh, the gift of discerning of spirits, uh, working of miracles. You can operate in the gifts. The gifts are free. The gifts are like salvation. Salvation was free. Uh, all we had to do was receive uh, receive it. And, 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 and the Holy Spirit is a gift. It's free. And, and all we had to do was receive it by faith. And we operate in the spiritual gifts by faith. But the fruit require your participation. There is a reason that we glorify the gifts because that's, that's what you can see. But the fruit of the spirit, they're not always as visible, but you need the fruit of the spirit to help ground the gifts. You need the fruit of the spirit to mature you in the faith. You need the gifts of the spirit because actually what the fruit is, is, is proof is that you have a relationship with God. That the more I have commune with God, the more I have intimacy with God, the more I have intimacy with the word, the more I have intimacy in prayer, the more I'm producing fruit, the more I can produce faith, the more faithfulness, the more I can produce love, the more I can produce peace, the more I can produce long suffering, the more I can produce all the gift of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit is contingent on my relationship with God. That's why we don't highlight the fruit because the, fr the fruit require work, but the gifts, they're free. I don't want us to be a wicked and a perverse generation that is always needing a sign. That's what Jesus said. I want us to be rooted and grounded in the word of God.
I want us to study to show ourselves approved, a workman that needeth not being ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I want us to st be able to stand in the, in the day of adversity, in the time of testing. I want us to be able to come together as one body. But the problem is the whole body is not even governing, uh, governing itself by the word of God. Some of us are just believers who are going to go to heaven, but going to live like sinners while we're here on earth. Some of us are believers who have the things we still don't want to let go of, where the book of he Hebrews says to lay aside every sin and the weight that does so easily beset you. Some have decided they're not going to give up anything. But I want us to go back. There is a remnant. There is a remnant. God always has a people left in the earth who will serve him. God always has a people left in the earth who desire him. God always, listen to this, has a people in the earth that respond to the truth of his word. We don't may not always want to hear the truth. You may not always like the truth. But as long as you have a sincere desire for the truth, God will continue to give you the truth. And once you receive the truth, the Bible says the truth will make you free. We like to say set you free. But that word make is much like, let me give you a natural example. Your mother tell you to clean your room when you're growing up. Let me say my mother. And you don't do it. <laughs> she tell you again and you don't do it. She had a method to make you clean your room. <laughs> now that's just a natural comical example. But the truth will make you free. The more that you read the word of God, Romans 12 and two, the more, our, let's just back it up, that we will be not conformed to this world, that we will be transformed by the renewing of our mind. The more we choose to use the word of God to renew our mind, hallelujah, the more we will desire his truth. That's what's missing in the land. Alternative facts, have been running ramp rampant, not just in the White House. Alternative facts, they are running around in the church house. They're running around in some of our houses. We have got to go back to the truth. Truth is important to God. How do you know that, Elder Diamonds? First of all, the Bible says God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Secondly, Jesus says, I am the way the truth and the life. The Bible also lets us know that the word is truth. Not just true, it's truth. That's why if you receive a report from your doctor that says you have cancer, that may be the facts, but the truth is by his stripes you're healed. You may feel like you have been rejected, but the truth is you have been accepted in the beloved. You may feel like uh, you, you don't know which way to turn, which way to go, but the truth is he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. You may feel overwhelmed right now, overwhelmed with COVID, overwhelmed with the holidays, overwhelmed with losing loved ones. But the truth of the matter is, if you set your affection on things above, that God is sitting there waiting on you. That's the truth. The truth of the matter is, Whatever the word says about it, that's what the truth is. The truth is you are fearfully and you are wonderfully made. The truth is you were made in the image and the likeness of God. So the fact may be that there was someone who spoke down on you. That fact may be that someone... Uh, talked bad to you as a child or someone said something to you that wounded you and stayed with you. But the truth of the matter is that God's word is spirit and it's life. And the other truth is death and life is in the power of your tongue. And whatever area you feel like death has been pronounced over you through the truth of his word, you open up your mouth with the word of God and pronounce life wherever there's been death. That's the truth. The truth is, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, thou art snared by the words of your mouth. The truth is, your words are the only words that really have power um, to speak to your future. But the fact is, you've given your power to someone else's word. But according to God, 
Death and life is in the power of your tongue. According to the truth of his words, thou art snared by the words of your mouth. You've got to put the truth on it. If we don't know the truth, we'll run around and be deceived, even in the church. We've got to know the truth. My tea is cold now. Hallelujah. I don't even know what time I got on. Oh, it's 8.53. So we're not going to hold you all night. But I just wanted to remind somebody. For those of you who want to register for the class, I really pray that you would consider it. Because I also have some... See, the thing about this is, even for those who have gone through the class, I hope we see, see some of you this class, because the Bible is not information, it's revelation. And that's why it's a preceding word. Every time you could read a scripture, and today God reveals one facet of it, and tomorrow he could reveal something else to you. And the next day he could reveal, because God is immeasurable. You cannot, he's not quantifiable, uh, his greatness is not quantifiable. Man cannot even contain um, in our mind the vastness of who God is. And each time we read the word, we experience the vastness of his glory. We experience his mercy and his goodness through the revealed word of God. I've been praying for you all. Last Sunday night, we had a call that was quite heavy, had a lot of people who were um, mourning loved ones. We're still praying for you. Uh, Sister Emma, the class is on, spe on sale right now. Uh, there's a Cyber Monday sale. It has uh, dropped from $99 to $49. And I do want to thank, there were a group of women who sold into the ministry in order for me to give this class to others at $49. So, um, Sister Emma, uh, if Jasmine, if you could put the link back in the comments, maybe she didn't see it earlier. Uh, the link is in my bio, but there is a promo code to get it for the $49 rate. Um, but again, I came on to check in. I will do these Sunday check-ins for as long as the Lord allows. Uh, as long as you have uh, an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, um, Sister Sherry says she would like to bless someone with the class, with this class. As long as you have an ear to hear, um, I, there are people in the comments. You all can, somebody is wanting to bless somebody. Somebody is saying, I really want to participate. I don't know what I really want to participate. If that means they need help, I'm not sure. But, but what I want to say to you all, as long as you have an ear to hear what the spirit is saying to the church, I will continue to come on on Sunday evenings um, to break open the bread of life. You know, we're doing it conversation style. We're doing it. Um, I'm not necessarily taking a text, but I want you to understand that God really loves you. And I want you to understand that he has not forgotten us, that this pandemic did not catch him off guard. I want you to understand that the racial climate that intensified this year, it was definitely not new, but it intensified this year, that that, that it did not, did not catch God off guard. I want you to understand that God knows right where I am, right where you are, right where we are collectively, that God has not forgotten us. And I want you to also know this, that his word says that your latter days will be greater than your former days. I see my cousin on here. Her father passed away this year. My uncle, that was a, that was a blow. That was a wound. He didn't die from COVID. However, um, I, I felt personally that COVID restricted our ability to celebrate him in a manner in which I know he was loved. And while the family did come together, um, there were many who loved him throughout the city where he resided and COVID prevented him from doing so. And I know them from attending. So I know there are many that are going through the same things, but I also want you to understand that God has not forgotten you. I also want you to understand that even in the midst of pain, even in the midst of sorrow, even in the midst of, of, of disappointment, that God is still good. It's the enemy's plan to rob you of your hope because if he steals your hope, you will have no faith. And faith is the currency of the kingdom. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. The Bible also says in Hebrews 11 and 6, without 
faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So the enemy doesn't want you to have faith because we can't please God without it. So how does he steal faith? By stealing our hope. I want you to hear this is not new because there's nothing new under the sun. The Bible says, remember when Jesus is talking to Peter and he says, Simon, 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 Satan hath desired thee to sift thee as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that your faith fail thee not. The fight is after your faith. The Apostle Paul says it this way, that he has fought a good fight. And that fight was the fight of faith. The enemy understands that the just shall live by faith. The enemy also understands that we walk by faith and not by sight. And so what I want to challenge you this week, whatever area that you feel you have a deficiency or a need right now, whatever area it is that you're seeking God right now, I want you to get you one scripture. Look up that scripture. I want you to meditate on that scripture. I want you to memorize that scripture. I want to take you back to the old school. I want you to write it on. A, I, I want you to write it because it is proven that you remember things more when you write them down. I want you to write it on a sticky note, put it on a sticky note in your bathroom, put it on a sticky note in your kitchen, put it on a sticky note in your car and remind yourself of the word of God so that the enemy cannot steal your hope uh, because he's still in your wants to steal your hope in order to steal your faith. I'm, I'm going to sign off. I don't know if it's courage still on here. He may have signed off already. He may have signed off already. Uh, something dropped in my spirit for you, Brother Kersian. But the Holy Spirit will bring it back at the appointed time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those of you that are signing up, I will see you tomorrow night. You will receive a confirmation email when you sign up, but tomorrow afternoon you will receive um, a Zoom link uh, by, by 3 p.m. You will receive a Zoom link for class. We do um, send a new Zoom link out each week just for security purposes. Um, again, this class is, I do see... Uh, one of my brothers that are faithful coming on tonight, but I, uh, this class as of now is for women only. I am praying about what's next for 2021, uh, but I don't want to throw anything out there arbitrarily until I really get clear instructions from the Lord. Uh, but for those of you who will be joining us, I look forward. Listen, we're going to finish the year strong. I promise you, God is going to meet you. I promise you, I feel something in my spirit in this last class that honestly, I haven't felt in, a, in another class. It's, it's a sensing, it's a knowing. And I understand that the season and time that we're shifting. And so God, as we get ready to, to go into the new year, according to our calendar, the, the American calendar, Praise the Lord. I see another just registered. Um, I want us to be prepared. I think many of us, and I'm going to try to close with this. I think many of us were not fully prepared because the word of the Lord, uh, we, we felt we weren't prepared. We didn't know 2020 was coming in the way that it came. But I want you to understand again that God will never leave you or forsake you. That he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And that... Um, Listen, we still have the Holy Spirit here with us. And until the Holy Spirit is, uh, listen, I've said this on here before. You don't want to be on this earth when God takes the Holy Spirit up. So right now we still are comforted by the Holy Spirit. We're still helped by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will lead and guide us into all truth. And so right now I am just excited about what God is going to do through this class, through the person of the Holy Spirit. They're going to be speaking. He's going to be speaking through me, but I want you to know it's not me. It is the Holy Spirit. 
I see people speaking to relatives. It is a blessing. Uh, it's good to see you all. I almost checked on you all on Thursday, on Thanksgiving night, but you know, that was just a lazy day for us after I finally finished cooking. And so we just ate and went to bed. I'm glad that we all made it. That's the other thing I want to say. We all made it. Whoever had apprehension about the holidays, the first holiday, the first hump is over. And we're going to get through this, the rest of this season, the rest of this year together. We are one body, fitly joined, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Um, again, for those of you who want to register for the class, I think the comments... I uh, have the link. Uh, I also posted the link um, earlier today, so it's also on my page. Also, for those of you who are new, if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel, we have a couple of teachings out there. We will try to get more. I have a lot. I just have, you know, sometimes I can go all the way in and I don't I don't know if everybody is ready for that. <laughs> so uh, we are trying to upload more content soon. Uh, but for those of you who have not uh, registered for the, uh, I mean, subscribe to my YouTube channel, please do so. Uh, I thought I had three points in my head, the class, the YouTube. Oh, and if you have not, please go check out my website, christydobbins.com. Subscribe to my website. Those of you who are female, you will uh, be added to the email list uh, when we let uh, let everyone know what's coming new and what's coming up uh, in the days to come. Um, I will, though, give live updates here, but you will be on the, the email distribution list and we will provide um, you a heads up when we have either a new class. And every again, the Art of Hearing is the only class I've um, that I have charged for this 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 entire, uh, my entire ministry. Uh, so everything doesn't come with the price. So just even sometimes we have zoom meetings that are not necessarily open to the public that I don't go live with, uh, because I do know on those, we go further and we do ministry. Uh, even though we're on zoom, I'm old school. The Lord does deliverance on, uh, through zoom, everything. Look, we are socially distanced, but we are not socially disconnected and there is no distance in the spirit. So the Lord has his way even through Zoom. Um, so with that being said, may God bless you all. Uh, I thank you for the sister who is paying for the other sister. May the Lord increase you for the seed that you're sowing. That he, may he bless you a thousand times for sowing into her life just for being obedient to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Um, may the Lord bless you. I see you all next Sunday. Uh, someone said I'm a newbie. Thanks for the invite. God bless you. You all have a good night.